Mayor, thanks for being with us. What do you make of the lack of moves by the Yankees when they're still very much in the postseason picture? Uh, Alana, there's no question. They're sending a message to the players in that clubhouse, in that dugout. This is what you have. Go out and prove you're a better team than the way you've been playing lately. Now, when you look at the grand scheme of things, they're very much in it, as you mentioned, just three and a half games back from that final wild card. But when you watch this team on a daily basis, you see there are deficiencies, and it starts with the offense. They just have not been able to score runs. And if you have guys like Anthony Rizzo, John Carlos Stanton, and DJ LeMahieu that cannot hit consistency, regardless of what you add, you probably are not going to have a successful offense. So really, they need the players they have there to start producing like they should, like the back of their bat baseball card says they should. And we've seen a little bit from Stanton here and there. It, at times, seems like he's getting going a little bit. But again, it's that consistency in that offense that just has not been there all season long. And Alana, I've covered this team now for 12 seasons. And I have to say, walking into the ballpark yesterday, one of the oddest feelings ever trade deadline day, because at that point, you generally know whether the team is buying or selling. And speaking to guys in that clubhouse, they didn't necessarily know if the Yankees were buying or selling. Isaiah Kiner-Falefa's name had been mentioned in, in some trade talks, some rumors. Obviously, he is still with the team, but he spoke before the game yesterday, and he simply said, look, we have not helped our case. We've been trying to play better. We just haven't been able to do it. And basically, we'll see what happens at the deadline. And as we know, they made a minor move for a bullpen piece. But aside from that, they are going with what they have. And guys like Harrison Bader, final year before he becomes a free agent, he went through his full batting practice yesterday, then passed a pair of reporters and kind of jokingly said to them, am I still on the team? It, there was a lot of questions surrounding this team yesterday. Now, as poorly as they've been playing lately, Alana, if that offense does get hot, this team can do some damage. They just have not shown you at any point in time this year they can do that consistently. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, this team is way better than they're showing on the field. If you look at Anthony Rizzo, I mean, this is a guy, obviously, that it hurts my heart and my soul to see him offensively right now, Meredith, just because of the struggles. How has he fallen off so quickly? I mean, there's got to be something going on. Look, it's not due to lack of effort. He's out there almost every day trying to get early work in, trying to fix that swing. And I go back to that Padre series in New York where he had uh, the run in where he hurt his neck a little bit, tweaked his neck, missed a couple of games. And I've continually asked Anthony Rizzo. People have asked Aaron Boone. Brian Cashman has been asked. Is something bothering Rizzo that is not allowing him to perform at the level we've seen in the past? And they continually say, no, he's healthy. Aaron Boone has gone as far to say he's as healthy as he's ever been as a New York Yankee. So with that being said, Alana, it just doesn't make sense. You know he's a better hitter than he's showing. The frustration is clear. Anthony Rizzo doesn't want to go out there every day and not be able to produce. Sean Casey has been working with him a lot. You wonder whether or not that will help. But he is just one of many in that lineup that just can't seem to find their way. Yeah, the Yankees have scored just six runs on 19 hits during their losing streak. Meredith, Aaron Judge, the Yankees go as he goes. He's reached base 10 of 17 times, but he's, in, you know, in the DH spot right now, not really wanting to put him in the outfield. Does he get a day off today in a must-win game? What's your take? Well, before this series, Aaron Boone said well, his hope was to play Aaron Judge in every game this series. Obviously, there was some backlash not playing in the final game of the Orioles series. But I do think you need to take into consideration, even though these games are incredibly important, Aaron Judge did not go out on a rehab assignment. This is a man that hasn't played in a major league game since he ran into that wall out in Los Angeles in June 3rd. So part of the process in bringing him back was he would require some off days, especially during this stretch of 13 in a row. What's pretty remarkable to me, Alana, the fact that he has not seen pitching in so long and he is as productive as he's been at the plate, really seeing the ball well. I believe he'll be in the lineup DHing today, but that creates a problem. If you can't put Aaron Judge in the outfield, that means you have to put Giancarlo Stanton in the outfield. And I'm not sure that the Yankees feel comfortable and confident in putting Stanton in the field every day. I think Judge to remain healthy throughout the course of the season is going to need more DH days 
than outfield days. Exactly how they play this remains to be seen, but we've seen the judge effect already with this team. When he's in there, for the most part, the offense looks a little bit different. And Alana, we saw him running the bases the other day, going first to third. It's pretty clear he's favoring that foot a little bit, whether it was bothering him or he was just trying to prevent it from bothering him. He only knows that. He says right now he is well enough to play, but was very clear when he came back, he was not going to be 100%. He's looked great at the plate, how long that continues. The Yankees are hoping for the duration of the season, but it's really a day-by-day -day thing with Aaron Judge. Yeah, Aaron Judge at 60% is better than most people at 100%. He's just that talented. Let's talk about the positive for a second, though, Meredith. Garrett Cole has been phenomenal. He has quietly um, been one of the bright spots of the Yankees this season. He leads the American League in ERA. He's right up there as far as strikeouts are concerned. But you made a really good point right before we did this interview that he could throw a complete game shutout every day. It doesn't matter if the Yankees don't hit and give him some run support. But on the pitching side, what has made him so effective? You know, he just looks so much more comfortable this year. It almost seems like it took him a little bit of time to settle into life as a New York Yankee. And you look at when he was signed. He had the pandemic year. Then it was kind of an odd year. The next year, uh, it took him a little bit to get into his routine. But this year, I think it starts with the fastball. He's locating that fastball, not only up in the zone, but spotting it where he wants to. And that just allows him to use his breaking stuff differently, where at times last year, he was almost pitching backwards. This year, he, it seems like when he goes out on the mound, he knows exactly what he wants to do. He's able to execute. And that's reflective in the numbers. And more than that, Anytime he's on the mound, you sense there's a bit more confidence with this team knowing what they're going to get from their starter. And while it hasn't affected Garrett Cole, you wonder when you have an offense that's struggling the way the Yankees have, how much that affects the pitcher on the mound knowing you almost have to be perfect out there to give your team a chance to win a game. Yeah, no room for error as far as that is concerned. The good news is Nestor Cortez making one more rehab start, and then hopefully he'll be back in that rotation soon. Meredith Morakovitz of the Yes Network, thank you so much as always, Mayor. We appreciate it. Of course, anytime, Alana.